Hello. Rise up in hope today. Rise up refreshed. Rise up believing. Rise up because today is a brand new day. It has new mercies. It has new miracles. And it is ours for the taking. So the Lord says. We have been in John. And today the theme is I want that kind of food. Have you ever been to a restaurant? It's one of your favorites and you just know what you're going to order because you order it all the time, but you're at the table and the person to the left of you is starting to talk and talk about a different menu and you're like, oh man. And like suddenly you are in confusion mode because you like what you're hearing so you say you know I'll take that today I'm gonna try something different or you go to a restaurant where you've never been and you ask the waiter so what do you have and he starts to talk about what his favorite thing is and you're like yeah I'll take that today well I'm taking this kind of food today in John 4. I want the menu Jesus was ordering from. Okay, yesterday we talked about in verse 28, this is chapter 4, verse 28, how the Samaritan woman left her water jar of everything of yesterday and she just moved and set out, delivered. She moved in freedom, freedom, and so we are going to continue on in chapter 4, and I'm taking my time because there's no reason to rush with God's Word. I want every piece of nourishment He wants us to have. So here we go. We're going to begin in verse 31. Meanwhile, His disciples urged Him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? Verse 34, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work his work. So I only want to look at those few scriptures. I love the fact that his disciple friends are concerned about him. Maybe he looks a little weary. I don't know because it says the disciples urged him. Maybe because they were hungry, they just assumed that he was hungry. Man, have you ever been around great friends that everything they have, they want you to have? And that's a beautiful blessing if, if they're good things. I've been also in some circles where everything they were doing was wrong and they just wanted me to eat their food and I had to make a serious decision. Am I going to eat with them or am I going to skip out from that meal? And here they're urging him, but he says to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Now, that's an interesting response. And then I love in verse 32, I could just see them all of a sudden, you know, they're perplexed. And they start talking to each other. Could someone have brought him food? They start to try and figure it out. And again, that little nugget there, I've got friends that have tr been trying to figure me out for years. And then they just give up because they're like, man, just can't figure that girl out. Could someone have brought him food? And Jesus says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. So I got two things here, two treasures. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work, to do it and to finish it. And the food was the food of his father. I'm going to read the study app here. It says the food about which Jesus was speaking was his spiritual nourishment. It includes more than Bible study, more than prayer, and more than attending church. 
Spiritual nourishment also comes from doing God's will and helping to bring his work of salvation to completion. We are nourished not only by what we take in, but also by what we give out for God. And I just want to back up for a minute. It says spiritual nourishment also comes from doing God's will. A lot of us go to church, but we don't do what the pastor preaches. Uh, a lot of us know pastors that preach, but don't do what they preach. And of course, that's not everybody, but there are those that we know about. And we have to do it we have to do what we hear, apply the Word of God, and finish the Word of God. Some of us are great starters, but we don't finish. Some of us are somewhere along the way in that place. I mean, there are. I'm a great starter. I have to work at finishing. I have to work at finishing the projects that I start because I've got so much enthusiasm when I begin something and I have to stay the course and finish it. I do. And so I don't know where you are or what your uh, challenges are because we all have them. You know, nobody's perfect. And so it's encouraging that we understand, number one, we're not perfect. Number two, we are all growing and going in a in a move, in a direction that is healthy. And I, and I really pray that these devotionals are doing that for you because they are, they are doing that for me. I am getting stronger every day. And that's because I am feasting with the diet of the Word of God. The menu of the Word of God is definitely where I get my spiritual nourishment. And my body also <clears throat> gets nourished. You know, there's a natural food that does wonderful things, fruits and vegetables, water, oxygen to the brain. I mean, there are there's a diet that brings nourishment to the physical body. But I have found that the spiritual diet feeds both. Because when I, I wrote it down, if I encourage myself in the Word every day, I will be full of hope and promise, and I will be lighthearted, my body won't feel heavy. I won't be bowed down. You know, um, there is a supernatural that takes over when the natural feeds the natural. Supernatural feeds both. And I hope that's for somebody today because when you supernaturally set yourself up with the diet of the living God, you thrive. You thrive because it's God's intention you know, if there's going to be a food shortage coming, I'm not scared because I know supernaturally God will take me and provide for me everything that I have need of. So, what are you eating? What's been in your diet lately? That determines a lot. The, the things that we put in are going to come out. They're going to come out. If I fill myself up with worry, uh, media that just bashes everybody, news that is constantly looking for negative, 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 I am going to be downcast. I'm going to be depressed. I'm going to be heavy, laden, burdened. But if I feed myself hope, if I feed myself the Word of God, if I feed myself prayer, uh, conversations that are positive with other people, then that is going to be where I operate from, and it's going to look very different. It is going to look very different, and that's where God wants us to be no matter what. The world around us may fall apart, but we don't have to partake in that. We just don't. And that will be your choice. And it does come with... Courage if you've never done this before. If you've never tried changing your diet and you've been feasting on sugar, which is causing your body to break down and, and doing wrong things, the minute that you take that sugar away, first of all, you're going to have a detox. And you're going to hurt for a little while because your body is used to that poor nourishment. And it's the same thing for a drug addict. You take the drugs away and they're going to have withdrawal. And the withdrawal is not pleasant. And um, 
they're going to have to endure. And in that endurance, grab onto somebody who can give you water along the way. That's what I call it. Give you hope along the way of your detoxation. Because you're going to need that. You're going to need to surround yourself with people that know the truth and can give you the truth when you need it. I can't stress that enough. Um, find, pray, 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 pray for believers to surround you when you are coming out of some serious stuff that need every ounce of prayer that you can muster up because addiction is real and addiction is anything. I'm not just talking food, although there are food addictions, we know how many addictions there are. Whatever you want to be set free from, set free from, surround yourself with the right people to help you get free. There was something else I wanted to read here. It says, uh, spiritual nourishment also comes from doing God's will and helping to bring his work of salvation to completion, finishing it. I looked up the definition of salvation. You know, I always say salvation is deliverance. Whatever you need deliverance from, salvation equals deliverance. But I looked it up because I wanted to see what the definition in my Bible definition in my Bible book is. Deliverance from danger or difficulty. Deliverance from the power of the penalty of sin. Salvation is the deliverance from the power of the penalty of sin. Anybody who is or has experienced being on the brink of death, and what I mean by that is you have been on a path of destruction because the wages of sin are death. You want to take yourself out. You want to plan suicide. You want to listen to death music. You, you're all about the death spirit just won't let you go. Salvation is for you today because it is the deliverance from the power of the penalty of sin. You are in your destruction because you have fallen away from God. God has, you know, he doesn't I want to, I, I want, I just want to say what the heart of God is in this moment. So just give me a moment. When we don't walk with him, when we walk away from him, our biggest penalty is he removes his presence because God cannot be where sin is. He hates sin. So he can't be there. So he has to withdraw and his withdrawing causes the enemy to raise every army of destruction and death around you and it is a tsunami of events that trickle down because you have fallen away from your creator the great news is he's right there and in a heartbeat in a split second he can fully rescue you it's like Peter, when Peter saw Jesus out on the water and he had faith to go out there, but he looked down in that moment, he began to sink. Jesus was right there. Jesus loves us so much. God, your father loves you so much that the rescuer awaits for you to reach up, to look up, to call out, to cry out. And he will be there with rescue. His mercy extends to you today. Some of us have been taking in the wrong food. We have been gorging ourselves, gluttoning ourselves with things that are harming our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions. Today is the day for you to get a new menu to reach for food that brings life, for food that will set you free and put you back on the path of your purpose and your destiny. You have the choice to allow Satan to steal your purpose and your destiny or not. We have the choice. Which food do you want today? I pray with all my heart 
the food of God Almighty, of Jesus, of powerful Holy Spirit will be the menu that you choose today. I pray for that. I pray for that. I can't make you have that. I know you. we've heard the expression, you can lead the horse to the water, but you can't make the horse drink. I can lead you to the truth because this is tested and tried in my life. <laughs> this I have tested and tried. I drink because I have taken the drink from both places and I know what brings life. It is offered to you today. It is available to you today. Choose which food you're going to eat today. I pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a beautiful day.